good morning welcome to the max channel we are actually as you know we've had a new calf um mama and baby are doing great um by now you know it is a little jersey heifer uh, she was bred by ally and of course her her daddy is uh daddy o the miniature jersey bull so uh we are very pleased with her being a little heifer but it's raining uh, we had a, a decent morning on a milk and right now again it's not really milk for us it's really yellow it's got some colostrum milk uh, mix so we've been keeping some some of the ones that's not good if she steps in or something we've been giving to the pigs but babies is doing well so we'll i think since it's raining we're gonna put her in the barn maybe let her and Allie go in the barn and kind of chill out for the day i'm trying to debate if i'm gonna milk Allie twice a day because she's so swollen and it's just because, again, this calf is not getting as much as she probably would need to get. So I'm, I'm debating that. Let me know what y'all are doing. If, you, if you're if you milking a family milk cow, or did y'all milk twice a day to get her used to it? Or did y'all only milk the once a day? So let's uh, let's get her moved to the little barn, and then uh, we'll start the rest of the day. <clears throat> again, I don't tend to milk but once a, time, once a day. But she is so full right there on that one front side. And I just don't, I mean, I know she's got swelling because she just had a, a calf, but, and he's, I mean, I mean, she's ate all she wants to eat. I don't think she wants to eat anymore. She's just calm, cool, and collected. So I'm going to try to get Allie to stay in the stanchion. She's been a little difficult, but I'm going to see if she'll stay in the stanchion and see if I can lock her in. And uh, baby's just chilling. He's, she's, uh, I keep saying he's, I don't know why, I'm sorry. She's just chilling. Long eyelashes, beautiful, beautiful. We worked with Allie for a little bit. She is being a little difficult this morning. Um, I almost busted it right there. Y'all almost saw the camera flop, flop down. <laughs> All right, so instead of trying to milk her twice, even though she does need it, I believe, I just can't get her to stay in there. And she seems very sensitive. So I'm going to just see how she does. Uh, you know, I, I got to watch her bag. I don't want her to get her too sensitive to a point where she doesn't want to uh, nurse her own baby, but at the same time, I gotta make sure she doesn't develop mastitis. So what I'm gonna do is go and put the shocker knot up. It's raining, as you see, but uh, we haven't put the shocker knot up yet for the meat chickens because of the weather the other day, and of course, the weather right now. But I don't really have time to, to not put it up. Uh, these chickens have lived inside in our garage on a heat lamp for about, uh, you know, about three weeks give or take so i need to get them in their their you know their temporary shocker knot fence and they're going to rotate in and be able to eat on grass and kind of have a, a cleaner digestive diet all the way throughout the rest of their life so i'm gonna go and set it up it's raining it's nasty but it is what it is i gotta get it done so let's get it set up and hopefully the rain won't hurt my camera too much Like I said in a previous vlog dealing with putting up temporary netting, basically what I do is leave it on the ground the whole time until I get it fully stretched out. Um, if you don't, you're gonna have a mess. So I basically I just roll it out like this. You see, I still got some here. Instead of pulling from right there and standing them up, I just come here, pull the excess slack because if you get these things tangled, it will take you way longer to untangle them. And get them hug on their hand uh, on their uh, stakes at the bottom it's terrible so we're gonna do it this way and that way it makes it a little bit easier to try to get it worked out you'll get it kind of somewhat stood up not looking to, to make it really pretty at first and then you go back and tighten it once you get them all in the ground 
But uh, you see, I got, I'm getting just rolling it out right now. And then we'll put it up like we want it. We want, always remember too, if you're moving chickens, put the opening close to the side that you're not going back to. Reason being is you're going to take it and fold it to the next paddock. So it makes it a little bit easier to move and we're still having to pick up the whole net. Your net that's on this side, it's going to stay there. All you're going to do is move the two points around, square it up, move your, your little meat shawl, you're done. So just a little word of wisdom. I don't know if it helps you, but that I always have to remember, don't do it so you got to take down all four sides again. Just do the two sides where you can turn around, throw it that way, move your hutch, you're ready to go. Also count your stakes. So we have 16 stakes built into this fence, which most of them are. <laughs> I learned that the hard way, so I wouldn't have to keep setting it up and trying to square it. So basically, you're going to have a four, 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 four. So when you're setting them up, you see how I got it laid down? And basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking one at a time, picking it up, pulling it, making sure nothing crosses. And that way, I've got four right there and stake it in the ground. Again, work it like that. That way, you're not going to tangle it up. So if you do tangle this up, I'm telling you, it will take a long time. Something that should take you... 10 minutes to set up is going to take you an hour and a half, two hours. So uh, that is strictly because I've done it. And I know how bad it stinks when you have to tear it all back down, untwirl it, untangle it, turn it around. It's just not worth it. So anyways, let's get it. Let's get the rest of it done because it is coming flood now. I don't know if you can tell it's flooding, but you see I'm not trying to get it tight right now. I'm just trying to get it up. Once I get it up, then I'll actually tighten it with the corner pieces. All right, shocker knot is done. This is the premier one. Like I said, shocker knot fence. Uh, 16 posts, 48 uh, inch high, 100 foot long. Uh, you can buy this off Amazon, but you can buy it directly from Premier One. Same price. Premier One is a, a great provider, as most people know, of uh, good fence and temporary fencing. So I uh, got this one set up. I've got three panels on each side and four on the side and instead of having that 16th worked in i let it be a wrap around as a gate almost so that way that helped me when i go to move it um, it gives me a little extra room to be able to make sure there's no no hole right in the gate entrance for the chickens to get out so you've got the setup here so you can see it i think it's gonna look good got it tight i'm obsessed with compulsive if you as you know so i don't like um at all crazy and cattywampus Caddy Wampus or have y'all ever heard of Caddy Wampus? It's done. Thank you so much for watching. It is flooding out here, so that's why we've got uh, this big rain jacket on. Uh, it's supposed to be bringing in another cool front. We had a few days of warmth, but now we're back cool. Uh, as you can see, we've got the other net over there, and that will be the one for the permaculture chickens in the garden. So we've got both of them set up. Of course, that one's been set up. We just tightened it a little bit. We've got both chargers charging. It's not getting much sun today. <laughs> so we'll have to let another sunny one or two days go on it. And then all the chickens will be moving out. So we are having a lot of transitions here, as you saw. Uh, of course, the new cow, Josie, uh, the, jo the little heifer. And then we've got uh, the meat chickens moving on up, moving on the south side of the yard. And then we've got the old lady hens moving on the very south side of the homestead so a lot going on thank you for joining us if you have any questions about some of the things we use let us know we usually put a description of everything we use and everything we use that we like we always link below so if we didn't link it and we're using it don't buy it if we did link it and we did use it you can buy it because it does really well we've been very pleased with a lot of the things that we use so thank you so much for watching god bless you share the max with some people you know Happy homestead, y'all.